Well, hello and a very warm welcome to this video. Well, I say video, it's a video of sorts. It's the first part of an audio book uh, with a lot of tips to hopefully inspire you to create your own Japanese garden, whether it be a, a traditional Japanese garden or one that is known as a Zen garden. Uh, those are the gardens with rocks and, and gravel, and you might have seen them uh, swirled with rakes to give the appearance of moving water. Um, much more about all Japanese gardens coming up for you in the book. Before I start, my name is Russ, by the way. On the screen, you can see my website, turnyourgardenjapanese.com. I've got three things to mention to you. Number one, uh, it's uh, part of my welcome please subscribe to our channel so you get notifications of uh, videos that we put up and we do post fairly regularly. Uh, for example, the second part of this audio book is, is going to be in the next week, is, is going to be in the next week or so. So you get to find out about that. Uh, so please do subscribe. We're building a very nice community on YouTube. We have a great one on Facebook. Uh, the second thing is the digital version of the book that you're about to hear over the course of this video and the second part video uh, is available in the description of this particular video. You will see a link and you can get this book on PDF. So if it interests you enough and you think, well, I'd like to get a copy of the book that I can store on my PC, on my phone, then you can do that. And the third thing is, if you want to take it to the next level, your ideas for a Japanese garden and get really, really, really inspired, turnyourgardenjapanese.com. There it is on the screen. Uh, we've put together a fantastic Japanese garden creation package that I think you will be very surprised, A, what's in it, the free bonuses that you get, and uh, the price is ridiculously low. Ridiculously low. So um, thank you for kind of becoming part of our community. Don't forget to subscribe. And here we go with uh, the audio version, part one of seven quick tips to inspire you to create a Japanese style garden. I will, compared to the book, occasionally elaborate on some of the information as I go through this particular book. So hopefully that's all right with you. Well, today, many landscapers, whether professional or home do-it-yourselfers like me and maybe you, are turning to Japanese-themed designs for landscaping a garden space. And I think that's great news. Peace and tranquility are two primary signatures of Japanese gardening. And it's these feelings that provide the attraction for so many people all over the world for a touch of the East as a, a landscape design in their yard or their garden. Another, they're easy to take care of in most cases and can be relatively inexpensive to create once you've come up with a design plan. So before we get on to giving you the background that you need and some ideas for your own Japanese garden at home, it's important to understand the different styles and types of Japanese garden that exist. And then you can, in your own time, decide what style could be right for you and forge ahead with your dream of your own Japanese garden. So types of Japanese gardens, tea gardens known as Chaniwa or Roji. Now the name may suggest that you sit and drink tea in this type of garden but that actually is not the case. Tea gardens are small gardens that are simply a passage to the tea house where a tea ceremony can be performed. Clearly unless you want to, you'll not have to worry about being so authentic. The passage from the entry, entrance of the garden, always a gate, is from the outside world, the world that you and I are occupying right now, to the inner sanctum and the calm environment of the tea garden and the tea house itself. A Japanese tea garden is supposed to give you a feeling of calm before entering into the tea ceremony itself. A person passes through these tranquil surroundings, leaving the stresses and strains, and let's face it, you all have enough of them, of the world, behind them before the tea ceremony itself. Tea gardens contain typically the following elements. A Japanese lantern, known as a toro in Japanese. Stepping so stones, tobi ishi in Japanese. A crouching water basin, that's for cleansing, known as a sukubai and an area for waiting, which is called the machi-ai. A path 
called a roji leads leads from the entrance of the garden. It's always the case in a tea garden. In English, it means dewy path. Another type of Japanese gardens are strolling gardens known as sukiyama. These types of gardens often replicate on a smaller scale existing landscapes. Also, an imaginary landscape can be created using the essential elements for Japanese garden design. That's the good news. They are often large landscape gardens too. So if you've got a lot of land or a big garden, then this could be the type of Japanese garden for you. It is a design name to have a path that navigates the edge of any water, usually incorporating stepping stones and even bridges. The arrangement of the rocks in strolling gardens is specific and it has to be said usually is stunning. There also would be many trees beautifully pruned and cared cared for. As a visitor takes in the garden's main view, the paths and stones, together with mounds and vegetation, allow the viewing of the central feature, but from different angles depending on which entrance is used. A central feature, for example, could be an island in a body of water. Let us move on to courtyard gardens, known as Suboniwa. The design and placing of Japanese courtyard gardens are very suitable for contemporary small spaces, even roofs, even terraces, and I've even seen some on balconies. They are, by their very definition and nature, small Japanese gardens. A subo is a Japanese measurement making up 3.3 square metres, and the Suboniwa has its origins as a garden in the 15th century. Rich landowners who had large estates or plots of land would act in between the buildings of their properties. The elements of a courtyard garden are very similar to those used in a tea garden, and the courtyard garden, by definition, is shadier, and so that means you need more shade-tolerant plants for actually including in the garden. They can often incorporate these types of gardens, courtyard gardens, elements from Japanese rock gardens or Zen gardens, as some people like to call them, because of their smaller size. So you can see pebbles and stones and rocks. Karisansui gardens, another very popular type of Japanese garden. And this type of Japanese garden is a waterless garden and it's always made using the elements of rock and sand and gravel. They are so popular and they are often termed Zen gardens. Well, I've got some news for you. In Japanese gardening, Zen gardens do not exist. They are kare sansui. They are kare sansui gardens. The translation in English is dry landscaping. And they're one of the oldest types of Japanese gardens as well. They first appeared in the Muromachi period in Japanese history between the year 1333 and 1568, over 200 years. And they are heavily influenced by the Zen Buddhist ideology. Hence, in the West, a lot of people like to call them Zen gardens. More often than not, they have limited plant life, if any at all. Quite often, moss is used. Rake gravel symbolizes streaming water, or, you know, water that's still. And groupings of rocks and stones symbolize land and islands. A very famous example of this type of Zen garden is the Ryoanji in Kyoto. It's hundreds and hundreds of years old and it's a waterless garden that I am immaculately kept to this day by monks. A Sukiyami garden, or to use an older term, Kasan, refers to an artificial or man-made hill garden. The hills can be viewed from various vantage points within a garden like this as you stroll along the garden paths and can sometimes even be climbed to enjoy an even better view of the garden. Yet another type of Japanese garden is the Hiraniwa garden. This type of Japanese garden is the complete opposite of the Sukiyami garden. These gardens are flat, there are no hills, there are no ponds. And designs of this type are supposed to represent either a mountain valley or an extensive barren moor. If it's the former, the surroundings should be steep and thickly planted. If it's the latter, the landscape should be bare and open. 
Hiraniwa are mostly used for confined areas, confined areas in crowded cities or for laying out and designing in front of buildings of, quite frankly, secondary importance in a city. Numerous examples can be seen in the back courts of merchants' houses in Kyoto and Osaka, two of Japan's biggest cities. No interior space being apparently too small, by the way, or circumscri circumscribed for converting into a fresh-looking and artistic garden of this time. A hill garden will be used in front of the principal reception rooms in a home. A flat garden may be employed facing rooms of less importance in the same estate. Japanese gardens really do not have to be expensive. That's very good news, I'm sure, to you. If a Japanese garden is well designed in the first place, it will not be expensive once you've designed it to create and actually make it what you be, the whole project relatively carefree. Many people incorrectly think that a Japanese garden will be expensive to create and maintain because it's got to have exotic plants and flowers in it. This could not be further from the truth because a Japanese garden seeks to have the simplest natural materials to create that peaceful and stress-free look that you're interested in. One very important principle in Japanese gardening to consider is that everything you do in your garden in terms of design and maintenance should appear to not have been interfered with by humans. Its appearance should be 100% natural. If you understand the underlying principles of Japanese gardens, you can create one that will not be expensive and will be easy to care for. So you may be thinking by now, what type of design should I consider for my Japanese garden? Well, well, the first design principle to be absolutely clear about when making a Japanese garden is that all elements of nature are present in these types of gardens. In Western-style gardens, it's usually far fewer elements of nature that are used in any one garden. And to be honest, Western gardens often appear quite cluttered. Unless you're blessed with a large area of space, it's best to create a smaller Japanese-style garden. This can be one, I don't know, with all sorts of elements like flowing water or dry water, aces, stones, a little pathway maybe, and certainly a lot of low-level shrubs. The other option is to go the Zen garden route, known in Japanese as a Karisensui garden, as I mentioned before. These are quiet environments that have much fewer elements like gravel stones, lanterns or perhaps a few shrubs on the periphery of the garden space in designs to look at and visually they're very appealing whilst being extremely easy to care for and maintain. Overall, Japanese gardens use more water, whether wet or dry water, than a western garden. Dry water, just to remind you, is the use of sand, pebbles, or even pieces of slate, for example, so that they signify a body of water. It could be a lake, it could be a river, it could be a stream. Larger rocks and stones are much more common as ingredients too. There are reasons for this, and a read-up on Japanese garden history will explain everything that you need to know. Gardens in Japanese culture have spiritual historical and cultural meaning. It may indeed be one of these elements, or maybe all of them, that attracts you to the idea of having your own Japanese garden. It's best to simplify the, best to simplify the design principles so that making your own Japanese garden is in fact as simple and straightforward as it can possibly be. Most Japanese gardens reflect Real, landscape, real landscapes, I beg your pardon, that you see in nature. This is something that in Japanese gardening is called borrowed scenery. What a designer does is copy a real piece of scenery only in miniature. You don't necessarily have to do this because you've got something, of course, called an imagination. But don't be afraid to use it either. Think about the elements that you would like in your mini landscape Japanese garden and really let your mind wander. You can use stones and rocks as hills and mountains, sand or gravel as water, small shrubs and ornamental grasses as plantings, 
trees like aces and maples and so on. Larger elements of the garden would be larger elements of the garden would be positioned at the back and the smaller items at the front to give you and the viewer of the garden a real sense of perspective and scale. Think of creating a scene that catches your imagination and reduce its scale to give you a manageable garden space. There is nothing to stop you thinking big, but that does mean a lot of work and more expense. It's far better to start making a Japanese garden on a small scale, and once you have the confidence and the knowledge, then you can increase the scale with confidence and make your garden bigger. Here's an example. A pond could signify a lake. Rake gravel, the swirling movement of an ocean. A lot of people like water in a garden space, don't they? In a Japanese garden, you can do all of this, although in a Zen garden, sometimes called a Japanese rock garden, it is not generally included because the sand and the gravel areas, the dry water. In Japanese gardening, wet water really is wet and dry is made up of the elements that I've told you about already. Flowing wet water in a Japanese garden, though, signifies the passage of time. Fountains are rare, but waterfalls, certainly natural ones, are typically far more commonplace. Japanese gardens usually appear very ordered and manicured, but can also be wild and even tropical in design. This gives you, frankly, a lot of options, depending on what garden space you have available and what sort of climate you have, because you've got to pick the right sort of plants and shrubs for your climate. That is absolutely crucial. Here's a golden rule. Never overclutter a Japanese garden. The Japanese enjoy free space, and the elements of your garden will look more natural and stand out as a result if you do this. Less is more in a Japanese garden space. Empty areas are not only authentic, but they're pleasing on the eye to the creator and the visitor alike. Be aware that you may have to curb your enthusiasm just a little bit when you start designing a Japanese garden. Here are some suggestions on what to include in your small space Japanese garden. When you start making your garden, it should look older are more established than its surroundings. Plants, shrubs and trees can really help bring your garden space to life and make it appear at one with nature. Hugely important in Japanese gardening. Always pick living ingredients that suit the climate where you live and do not be afraid to plant trees like maples in colder climates because they survive in Japan in temperatures well below minus 10 degrees centigrade. The heat of the sun is much, more, much more of an enemy than the cold and ice to you. A popular common element in a Japanese garden, and even some Zen gardens, are small coniferous shrubs. Evergreens are really important as well. They provide colour all year round for your garden and will help your other trees and plants stand out during their seasonal changes. A good rule of thumb when creating a Japanese garden is for every deciduous planting, plant two evergreens. Try and let that sink in. Coniferous shrubs really fit the bill. They're hardy. They require little maintenance apart from some minor shaping and pruning. And you know what? They look really striking when planted near rocks and stones. And because they start off small and the view actually gets better as they get bigger over time and naturally grow. Remember to plant with spaces between them as well and other shrubs or rocks allows the growth and avoids a cluttered look, a big no-no in Japanese gardening. The really good news is that you've literally hundreds of varieties and species of coniferous shrubs to choose from. And popular ones include mugo pine, dwarf balsam firs, and neck spruce. They look great. They're very hardy and they're extremely common in many Japanese gardens. Bamboo is another popular addition in a Japanese garden, not only for separating areas, but also as a plant. Tea gardens always have arrangements of bamboo, but for your small Japanese garden space that I recommend you think about creating first, then these are the varieties of bamboo plants that will work best. Sasa, Dake, Chiku and Take. 
Japanese garden plants are chosen for their flowering. And if you want a cavalcade of coloured evergreens and trees, then herbaceous Japanese plants will be the solution. Morning glory, iris, dead nettle, lily turf, kuzu vine, white radish, Japanese pampas grass, henbit, horseradish, Japanese ardesia, peony, white chrysanthemum, all plants that flower very colourfully, but also in most cases have very green leaves, providing a beautiful contrast. You can use azaleas and camellias to great effect as well. For the spectacular, there is the climbing Japanese wisteria that is beautiful. It grows vertically and is covered in white flowers to a maximum height of approximately five feet. Bonsai plants and trees are popular as well, but be warned they take quite a lot of looking after and need to be skillfully watered and pruned. These are usually placed, by the way, I'm talking about bonsai plants, in suitably sized pots or containers around the garden area itself. Some, like the Japanese maple bonsai, look wonderful planted between two rocks. Others, like the Japanese black pine or Japanese white pine, plum and cherry, flourish a lot better in a container. By far, the most popular bonsai plant in a Japanese garden is the Japanese black pine. It's hardy and it looks green all year round. A balance of colour is what you are looking to achieve throughout the 12 months of the year in your Japanese garden. And that is part one of our book. I hope you've enjoyed listening to uh, me take you through it. Part two is in the next video that you will also find on our video channel here on YouTube. And don't forget, please subscribe and then you get notifications of all new videos. And good luck cre creating your very own Japanese garden.